last month, China uh, dropped off from being the number one um, importer, uh, country from which the United States imports. So the United States uh, had traditionally, uh, China comprised about 20% of all imports into the United States with Chinese companies, over 20%, 22, 23%. I mean, significant numbers, almost a quarter of all the goods and, 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 and stuff that the United States imports, it imported from China. As of uh, July, not August, July, China constitutes 14.6%. So it's a, a massive decline worth billions and billions of dollars. And this has started in 2018, uh, and, and it's really accelerated since 2021. And uh, we're down to 14.6%. And what has happened is that the number one nation uh, whose businesses are exporting to the United States is now Mexico, which makes a lot of sense. Mexico's right here. It's close. So it's Mexico now, then China, and then Canada, all very close to one another in terms of the percentage that uh, they export, they, that the United States imports from them. Um, Mexico now is, uh, is about 15%. Uh, China is about 146 Canada, it looks like it's about 13, 13 point something percent. So uh, uh, you've got a real shift happening in terms of uh, trade, in terms of where the United States is importing the stuff that, that we consume. Uh, and, uh, and what is happening is, is as buyers in the United States shift away from China, try to diversify supply chains, try to protect themselves from the potential for a war in, in, uh, with Taiwan, uh, a potential for, uh, I don't know, some kind of economic crisis between the United States and China, sanctions, things like that. More and more companies are not moving production to the United States. What they're doing is they're moving production to places like Mexico, to some extent um, Canada, but primarily uh, to uh, Mexico. You're seeing a massive increase in the building of industrial parks, warehouses uh, all over Mexico, particularly in the north, in, in Baja, but also in Nuevo Leon, which is uh, borders with, with basically Texas, but also in Chuja, you know, I can't pronounce these places. Anyway, in the north of Mexico, also in the central around Mexico City uh, and uh, in, in the state of Mexico, uh, the, the, as compared to the country. And uh, uh, in other parts of Western and Southern Mexico, uh, basically across Mexico, there is a significant increase in economic activity, in building. Mexico generally is doing shockingly, I mean, really surprisingly, doing really, really well in spite of having a um, corrupt socialist uh, leader as president of Mexico. Uh, Mexico has seen a surge of exports, primarily to the United States. It also has really the strongest currency in the world this year, stronger than the dollar, which is very unusual. Uh, so it has performed better than the dollar. The dollar is weakened as compared to the, uh, uh, the Mexican currency. There is a huge amount of foreign direct investment. Uh, it's up 40% in 2023 versus uh, last year, and that's, that's a consequence, again, of people diversifying supply chains, moving supply chains closer to the United States, becoming less dependent on China. And, and Mexico is a massive beneficiary of this. One could only imagine how well Mexico would be doing economically right now if it didn't have a socialist president, if it had even semi-free market policies, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 as part of its economic policies. Tesla is uh, building a proposed $5 billion factory uh, in uh, Mexico. So not since NAFTA has, uh, has the country attracted uh, so many investors, so much investment uh, into, uh, into Mexico. And, you know, we'll see. Mexico often blows these opportunities. This is a real opportunity for Mexico. 
whether it blows it because of horrible economic policies or whether the drug war goes out of control or, or something else, uh, you know, people resist making those investments. This, this could be unique. This is a unique opportunity for the Mexican economy. And the real challenge is, will they take advantage of it or will the corruption and the socialism of the authorities in Mexico undermine? Now, uh, it appears that in the election, which I think is happening early next year, uh, the two candidates, the candidate of the ruling party, the more socialist party, uh, uh, is, uh, I think, uh, the former, uh, the, the mayor of, New, of Mexico City. And uh, the opposition party uh, is both are women. So uh, you're going to have a woman president for the first time in Mexican history next year. Uh, clearly, the opposition candidate seems better than, uh, than the uh, ruling party target, but candidate. But if, if this economic boom is a reality and continues, uh, that might be an issue. Uh, you know, the current president, Andre Manuel Lopez Obrado, has repeatedly clashed with business interests, repeatedly clashed, and because, you know, he's a socialist after all, and, and constantly is trying to regulate and control and break up. And, uh, and uh, you know, if Mexico is going to take advantage of this massive amount of investment flowing into the country, it's going to need better, better business practices. Hopefully, the opposition could win, and hopefully that victory will lead to a better, more prosperous uh, Mexico. A more prosperous Mexico is, is great for America. Uh, it, more trade with Mexico is great for America. Uh, more building, more creation in Mexico, fantastic for America. Among many, many things, it, it reduces the pressure on the, on the border. We haven't really had positive net Mexican migration into the United States since uh, you know, since the great financial crisis in 2008, Mexicans left America and went back to Mexico during the financial crisis, and very few have come back. Uh, so uh, I don't think that's particularly good for the U.S., but it's it's good for the I, I don't know for, the, for all the craziness at the border, uh, not to have uh, uh, illegal immigrants from Mexico. The reality is for Mexico these days is there plenty of opportunities, opportunities in Mexico. They don't have to travel north. But they might be, if, if Mexico can actually embrace uh, in, in policies that lead to an economic boom, then Guatemalans and Venezuelans and others might decide to settle in Mexico because there are job opportunities there. Now, you've also got a law and order problem in Mexico that they're going to have to deal with at some point. Uh, this administration in Mexico has no interest in dealing it. They basically cut deals with the cartels. I, I'm, I don't know if a future administration can do, uh, will and can do any better.